quick easy tutorial here um, mostly for beginners it's gonna help you guys a lot when it comes to coding your platformer or top-down directional input so let's just get straight into it when we look at get action strength what does it do it returns a value between 0 and 1 representing the intensity of the given action now for a keyboard usually keyboards don't come with sensitive keys so they're not going to have sensitivity and so it's either going to output 0 or 1 right what does this mean? If we're pressing right and not left, 1 minus 0 equals 1. If we're pressing left, not right, 0 minus 1 equals negative 1. If we're pressing both, 1 minus 1, 0. If we're pressing neither, 0 minus 0, 0. So input direction equals negative 1 based on left, 0 if nothing, right if um, 1. And this is important to note. So we have to make sure that it's not zero when we're setting the scale.x and we're setting scale.x to set the facing direction of the sprite now i know a lot of people like to use the flip h property but i'm going to tell you why this is a much better way it's because when you look at this input direction right now you all you have to do is set the scale.x equal to input direction like i said before it's negative one zero or one and we're already taking care of the zero property so the scale doesn't equal zero which is just going to make the sprite disappear. So it's either going to equal negative 1 or 1. And this works because of this. When we do here, right, it's either going to be 1 or negative 1. And now negative 1 is facing left, 1 is facing right. So when you set um, a value to its negative counterpart in scale, all it's going to do is do the same thing as flip h. Now one caveat I have is, let's say here, right, um, by default, right, I have nothing checked. By default, it's going to be 1, 1, right? But this is a problem because we define 1 as facing right, right? Now, if we want to do negative 1, we define negative 1 as facing left, but now it's facing right. And the way to combat this is what you saw before is where I have this flip H property also set. So now we're combining this property with this so that we get the correct values. And you see now, negative one facing left, one facing right. So this is a really easy thing to do, right? All you have to do is set one property. If you ever import a sprite and it's facing the wrong direction, because um, in Godot, right is based on one, right? So you make want to make sure your sprites are facing right by default. Um, and now this is a really simple solution. All you have to do is set the flip H property if you use scale.x, right? Okay, so let's just get into the top down part now. Now the top down is the exact same thing in the X direction. Now we have this new line for directional inputs in the Y direction, right? If we look here, you'll notice it's down minus up, which, you know, logically you'll think, hmm, that doesn't make much sense. But when it comes to Godot, you look at this axis here, right? When we go down, we're actually going in the positive y direction. And when we're going up, it's actually the negative y direction. So the y axis is actually kind of inverted when you look at it, right? I'm going to comment, comment this out for now, but I'll get back to it later. Um, so it's inverted, right? And this makes sense. So up is negative 1. And if we are pressing the up arrow key, this is going to output 1, and this is going to output 0 if we're not pressing the down, right? So that's 0 minus 1 equals negative 1, which is up, right? And if we're pressing the down and not the up, it's going to be 1 minus 0, and it's going to be 1, which is down in good dough. So just keep that in mind that it's inverted in the y-axis. Now, this is just for show. You're not going to be using scale.x or scale.y for flipping a sprite and a top down because top down um, the direction it's facing is usually going to be based on rotation so you're really not going to be using this um, and if we run it here in my little demo so this is the x input so how much we're inputting so we're inputting one and it's facing right nothing so it's going to stay now we're putting negative one nothing stay both it's going to be zero negative one, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Now for top down, we have X and Y now. If we look here, we're not pressing anything. If we here, we're pressing right and up, right? Cause negative one is up. We go like this, negative one, one, 
going left and down, you know, etc, etc. So you could see how this works, right? And I commented this out because it kind of messes up with the demo. But you want to do this, and I'm not going to go into the technicalities of what it does. But what normalize pretty much does in a visual, uh, visual aspect is that it makes sure that your diagonal inputs, right? So when you're pressing, for example, right and up at the same time, it's not going to move faster than when you're just pressing like up, right? Just one direction, right? And think about why this makes sense, right? If you're pressing left or right and up, that means you're getting one in the right and one in the up, which means you're moving way more, right? Then if you were just moving up one, you know, it's it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to really get into the math of it, but that's pretty much how it works. And so, yeah, that's it for the tutorial. And I hope you guys enjoy.